Hey folks, welcome back to My Hit and Reads. I'm Eleanor and this is a belated July wrap up. Um, sorry I've been silent for a few weeks. I did participate in the Dewey's 24 hour reverse readathon, but I didn't finish recording my vlog and it didn't go quite so well as I expected because I started having headaches that weekend. Um, and then after that weekend, I got sick and I'm still recovering from being sick. Um, so do excuse me if I cough. too much um yeah we'll see how we go um but I really do need to get this July wrap up out so I read eight things in July um they were all electronic and most of them were for the Hugo Awards funnily enough given that um the voting closed at the end of July um and they've just been announced so you know you can go check out who won but so the things I read in July I started off the month with The Tea Master and the Detective by Elliot de Bodard. Uh, this is a novella that was on the Hugo list. Um, it uh, meets my goal of reading people of colour because Elliot is part Vietnamese. Um, and this is set in her ongoing universe of short stories and novellas and such things, which I quite enjoy, um, where it's far future, it's in space, and they have mind ships, and it's a very Vietnamese society and the, the mind ships are parts of the family and so the tea master and the detective was quite enjoyable because it's basically Sherlock Holmes in space so this mind ship um, which has retired and now makes tea blends to help people travel is hired by this woman to go take her out into deep space um, where the, the mind ship hasn't been <coughs> since um since the war, since her, she lost her family, um, in order to investigate dead bodies. And they end up investigating a murder. So it's, yeah, Watson is a tea-making ship. It's a whole thing. The second thing I read in July was not Hugo related. I listened to the audiobook of The Women in Black by Madeline St. John. This is one of my favourite books that I've discovered in the last few years. And it's one of the ones that I've started pretty much reading on a yearly basis. So this is the story, you've heard me talk about it before, of a bunch of women in 1960 in Sydney who are working in the ladies' cocktail section of a department store over the Christmas New Year period and what happens in their lives. So that was a nice bit of comfort reading. Then I went back to the Hugo reading and I read, I started basically on the novelettes. So I read The Last Banquet of Temporal Confections by Tana Connolly, which was reasonably enjoyable um it was about um a baker and his wife and the baker manages to learn how to bake confections which give you memories good memories sometimes bad memories but he's been enslaved by this unlawful ruler um and sort of these memories are being brought up while the wife is a taste tester um and she knows that her husband is trying something to get them free um so yeah, it's sort of, yeah, fantasy world, memories, that kind of thing. Um, then I read The Only Harmless Great Thing by Brooke Bellander. Uh, this is about radioactive elements, elephants. So I had a little bit of difficulty understanding this one. There's a lot of jumping around in times. So there's three or four different time periods um, and they kind of intertwine with each other. And I, yeah, I didn't really like this one. Sorry. Sorry, Brooke. Um, then I read The Nine Last Days on the Planet Earth by Daryl Gregory. This gives me a queer protagonist. So it's basically these seeds landed all over Earth from space. And so it's basically the next... Um, it's based around this... Starts out as a little boy and his mother dies. No, his mother doesn't die. She ends up divorcing his father. But he's from the South and he's queer. And it basically follows his life through kind of the lens of these alien plants that are attempting to take over the planet. Um, not necessarily with any intelligence, but you know, there are constant outbreaks in, around the world of different plants, um, which have different effects because they're alien. But yeah, it's also a, like a, a queer family story. So um, yeah. <clears throat> then um, I read The Thing About Ghost Stories by Naomi Kritzer. I did quite enjoy this one. Um, it's basically about a folklorist who collects stories about ghosts, but also it's told through the lens of, the, of, of her relationship with her mother, who 
she had to look after because she had dementia. Her, her mother's now died and she keeps being told by various mediums that her mother wants her to find this ring. And so there's, it's, it's a lot about ghost stories and the different types of ghost stories, but it's also about her relationship with her ill mother and um, her grieving her mother. Um, so that was quite sweet, really. Um, then I read When We Were Starless by Simone Heller. Um, this was really weird. I wasn't all that fond of it. It was like post-apocalyptic and there were these creatures um, that had this nomadic tribal society that were trying to live um, in this post-apocalyptic world. And this particular one who's a bit of an outsider has this encounter with um, a holographic uh, sort of visitor's center interface. Um, which completely changes the way their society works. Again, one I didn't really quite understand. A lot of a lot of the short fiction this year, I kind of was a bit eh about. So yeah. Um, and then the final novelette and the final thing that I read in July was "If at First You Don't Succeed, Try Try Again" by Zen Cho. So this was about an emugi who was desperately trying to become one of the free flying dragons by stretching, by learning, by studying and then keeping reaching for the stars and never never quite making it and eventually discovering that it's okay to be what you are um and you know but it's then in the end after you learn a lot about yourself it's still okay to reach for the stars so it was also kind of sweet and um i think that was also a queer protagonist as well because i think it was a lesbian relationship although the gender on the movie is, is never really quite clear um but yeah, so those were what I read in July. I probably shouldn't talk long because, yeah, the cough, my throat is starting to get irritated, which means I'm starting to cough. Um, I hope as I get more healthy, I will be a little more regular in my updates. Um, and hopefully I'll have more interesting things to talk about in my August wrap up. But um, yes. Anyway, that's it for now. And I will see you all again really soon. Bye.